Welcome back. Well, today I'm going to review the 44 Magnum. You know, I was wondering which cartridge I would talk about next, and I was thinking along the lines of rifle cartridges, but you know, uh, the first rifle that I owned, Centerfire rifle that is, the, that I owned, was a 44 Magnum that I uh, bought by delivering many papers over the course of a year. Uh, I, I don't think I ever worked any hard for anything uh, in my life except for that. That, that. that gun brings back fond memories. It's, uh, it, was a, it was a 336 Marlin Texan and uh, a 20 inch barrel. Uh, it went out of production I think in the early 70s because the 336 action simply was not well suited uh, to a short cartridge such as the 44 Magnum and they went back to the model 1894 eventually which was more uh, ideally suited to it. But you know, there was something about that gun that was just right. It had, it had, that, it had that mystique of the 44 Magnum and I can tell you whatever mystique the 44 Magnum has now it was far greater back then when it was the most powerful uh, handgun cartridge in the world. Uh, you know, it has since been uh, toppled off of that uh, throne, but uh, it, it still has it, it still has that uh, fabulous uh, mystique about it that uh, really no other cartridge has. Maybe some of it it goes back to uh, you know the Dirty Harry series and everything in the early seventies, but um, the 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 actual the actual um, history of the cartridge kind of brings you around in a circle and back to the beginning again. It began really with the uh, 44 Russian. In the 1800s, uh, the, the Smith & Wesson revolver chambered in the 44 Russian was a very, very popular cartridge. It was a black powder cartridge that uh, was extremely accurate. Um, and it was, uh, it, it was shorter than uh, the 44 Special by about the same difference that the 44 is to the 44 Magnum. Um, the, as uh, uh, smokeless powder was uh, developed. Uh, in those days, smokeless powder was quite bulky and probably uh, probably on the same idea as trail boss would be today, uh, very bulky fills the case up. So when they first came out with the 44 Special, the case was lengthened uh, over the 44 Russian and uh, that, that particular cartridge became an instant uh, favorite among target shooters, especially, and it was also a good law enforcement cartridge. It was a it was a gun that uh, was it was formidable. It uh, had it had large bore diameter, uh, heavy bullet, uh, and for those who could handle it, it was quite a it was quite a uh, good cartridge. Um, you know, in the in the old end frame revolvers that Smith and Wesson Smith and Wesson. Uh, chambered in which, and the end frame result, revolver is the same as the, the Model 29, uh, you know, that the 44 Magnum was chambered in for so many years. But that large frame obviously was a little bit much for the average uh, working patrolman who uh, favored more on the idea of a, a K frame, you know, and that's where that's where the, the 38 Special came came into favor was basically because it was something that was a little bit more portable. I can tell you that you know when you're when you're strapping on a gun and walking around all day long, uh, you know weight and size does make a difference. So um, the uh, 44 Special um, was quite popular uh, throughout throughout most of the early part of the um, 20th century, and it it had a little bit of competition, I suppose, with uh, the 45 uh, Auto and also uh, something which is probably little known today, uh, the 45 Auto Rim, which was a, um, a rimmed version of the 45 Auto that allowed it to be used in a uh, revolver without using half moon clips, that, in other words, to prevent, prevent the rounds from uh, going too deeply into the chamber. So uh, the Auto Rim cartridge uh, was also uh, a very popular round. Uh, in the 45 caliber, so that that had some that took some competition with the uh, 44 special, and the 45 the 45 Colt, sometimes called the 45 Long Colt, though that's not really a, that's not a true designation. 
uh, but the 45 Colt was uh, always a very popular single action round in the uh, in the Colt revolver, single action revolver. So you know those those cartridges always reigned as the big bore favorites in America. But the 44 Special always had its own particular uh, audience. It was always very much favored by those who liked a, a very accurate round and those who especially could hand load and could soup it up a little bit. The 44 Special uh, was no, uh, it, it really was, it, it really was no uh, lackluster performer at, at 750 feet per second with a, uh, you know, a 200, a 236 grain bullet in those days, I think it was, uh, lead bullet. Uh, there was nothing, there was nothing substandard about his performance by any means. Uh, it had plenty of frontal area. Um, many countless of deer were taken uh, with that cartridge, you know, it, it, within its uh, shooting range, within its standard range. But it was, a, it was the uh, inimitable Elmer Keith uh, who began to really uh, discover what the 44 Special was capable of. He was an author and writer of great uh, renown and great fame who he wrote about the, he wrote, wrote about the Wild West. He, he, he was out there when it was happening. Um, and anyway, he uh, kept working with loads, and the story goes that he blew up many guns in the process of uh, doing it. Uh, he worked with many loads, which increased the, the power potential of the 44 Special way beyond its original, uh, it, its original loadings. And we're talking, we're talking upwards and beyond a uh, thousand feet per second. He was adding three and four hundred feet per second to the uh, to the uh, forty-four special um, because of his because of his uh, power as uh, a penman, writing writing all the time. Uh, he he basically managed to get Smith and Wesson's attention, the people at uh, Springfield, Mass. And uh, they, they colluded with him and they worked up a 44 Magnum, but on the basis of uh, a longer case that would preclude chambering a 44, the, the more powerful round into some guns that may uh, come apart at the seams if they were uh, overly loaded. Remember that not all, not all 44 specials were, you know, stoutly construct constructed guns. Some of them were uh, much more lightly constructed and simply didn't have the, the top strap uh, heft uh, and, and the basic uh, frame necessary to hold together under high pressure. So when the 44 Magnum came out, it was an instant, instant success. Um, and it, you know, it, of course, it had a lot of it had a lot of pre-release press. You know, this was this was a cartridge that uh, the the country had been waiting on with bated breath for many years, while Elmer Keith you know, wrote, wrote about his uh, 44 special loads and loaded with unique and 2400 uh, powder and stuff like that. And in the meantime, you know, everybody is out there and they're probably all, they're also uh, destroying their own guns in the process. So the, um, the 44 Magnum arrived on the scene in a very, very uh, big way. Everybody who first uh, shot it and you've got to remember that in those days, you know, people didn't wear, they didn't wear hearing protection. Um, the gun startled the hell out of anybody who first uh, pulled the trigger back. It was, uh, by, all, by all accounts, uh, to have a uh, round flying out of supersonic levels, which, you know, most handguns of the day were not supersonic. We're talking, you have to get up over 1,150-ish feet per second before you can start uh, breaking the speed of sound. So uh, for those people who uh, were first um, introduced to the, 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 the power, the muzzle blast of a 44 Magnum and uh, the, the accompanying screech that went along with it when you're not wearing uh, hearing protection, uh, that, was, that was something to behold. It was, uh, the, you're talking about energy that was double the uh, 357 Magnum, which at the time the 357 Magnum had already become uh, legendary in terms of 
uh, its performance and uh, power. And some of the some of the legends were nothing more than legend. You know, they were they were tremendous. They were tremendous tall tales about you know 357 magnums, you know, penetrating through and through engine blocks and stuff. This, you, you you have to, you have to go far with a 3006 to do such feats. But uh, but anyway, you know, that was a that was a day of great. Uh, storytelling and great legends. You had great writers that were always writing in all these different ma gun magazines and promoting these things. So the 44 Magnum, you know, immediately became rocketed into the public eye. And uh, Clint Eastwood certainly did his part in the early 70s to uh, further uh, increase his fame and probably did more than any one individual to increase the fame of the, the Model 29 Smith & Wesson. Uh, the Model 29 Smith & Wesson went from being, one day it was a uh, simply a specialist gun that few people had any interest in, uh, and then the next day uh, Smith & Wesson couldn't make enough of them. And that's the way it remained for quite a number of years. And in the meantime also, uh, Ruger, you know, jumped on the bandwagon with their, uh, they, they were right there on the scene at the right time in history, uh, and they came out with the Super Blackhawk with the uh, you know, with this, this classic uh, spur trigger guard, which, as far as I'm concerned, they could leave the classic spur off. That, that, that's one thing that, you know, I, 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 broke my, I broke my fist many years ago in a, in a brawl, you know, on the job, and my knuckle now is re relocated to a different place, and it, and it seems to, it seems to get bit by this uh, quite frequently. So, as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 the um, the spur is something that uh, is, is less than desirable for me, and I know that it, I know that it tends to bite other people too. But you know the the um, the 44 Magnum is an extremely uh, is is an extremely uh, different cartridge than anything else, uh, up at least un until that time. Uh, velocities almost doubled with. Uh, the, the 44 Magnum over its previous, uh, its parent, the 44 Special. We're talking about a cartridge that went from the realm of 750-ish uh, feet per second where they, uh, they were claiming at the time 1,500 uh, feet per second with a 240-grain bullet, which I, I think is a dubious claim. Uh, but even if it was at 1,400 feet per second, uh, that's, that was quite an amazing uh, that was a, quite an amazing feat. So it, it really, really uh, was a spontaneous introduction on the market that, that uh, didn't, never saw anything like that before. Um, and, in, and in many ways, uh, it still retains that mystique. Uh, the 44 Magnum is still a fabulous cartridge. It's a very, very accurate cartridge. It shares the accuracy of uh, the 44 Special that, uh, that fathered it. And it also, um, it, it, is a, it is a very effective uh, big game cartridge. Uh, it has been used to take game probably far in excess of what it ought to have taken or uh, been pursuing. Um, you know, we, we sometimes fall into, it's very easy to be drawn into uh, a malaise uh, and forget that we're still talking about um, ballistics. Ballistics are a scientific it, it's a scientific uh, notation that everything e everything has to fall within certain numbers. You can't you can't change ballistics simply because uh, things sound interesting. You know if you have a if you have a uh, 240 grain bullet traveling at uh, 1400 feet per second, that's quite an astounding feat for a handgun. But in terms of co comparing that to uh, rifle cartridges, you know there's a uh, it would be a yawn factor. Nobody could release a rifle cartridge with those ballistics and get very far with it. So, you always have to keep things in a relative perspective. You know, but when I said that things have gone around the world again, the 44 Special was at one time uh, dismissed. Uh, as soon as the 44 Magnum came out, uh, 44 Special Ammo simply corroded on the shelf and nobody, nobody paid any attention to it. The day, the, the evening that I uh, plunked down my, all my cash for that um, 336 Marlin with my dad, um, 
the uh, gentleman behind the counter, he was probably trying to get rid of some of that old corroded ammo, but he, he dropped a box of, a box of 50, uh, it was a green box of 50 uh, 44 specials with round nose lead bullets, and uh, he, gave, he gave them to me for half price. And he said, son, he said, you're going to have more fun with these than that, that 44 Magnum. And I, I, I blew it off. I dismissed it because to me, I wanted to, I wanted to shoot the 44 Magnum. So I had the, I had the box, I had the box of each. And I went to the farm that uh, I had always shot at with my dad. In fact, the farmer, I remember, he, pro he probably regretted it afterwards. But uh, he told us he used to go, go shoot up that old Buick out in the back pasture. So. Uh, so we did. We went out in the we went out in the back pasture and stood off about 50 yards and started plinking at the old Buick. It was an old, it was an old 1930s Buick. It was all rusted and everything. But I imagine these days somebody would have taken that and, and made themselves a good, uh, a, a good restored car. But uh, you know, I learned something in the next half hour out there in the back of that meadow that I'll never forget. That that gun dealer was right. That 44 Special was far more fun than anything I had ever shot in my life. Uh, there was just something about there was just something about it. Uh, the you know you could shoot it nicely without having to have ear protection outdoors. It was it was firing shots at, at well with a with a, a rifle it was probably increasing its velocity maybe up to even 900 feet per second, 850, 900 feet per second. Uh, you know it it just was a fabulously fun planking round. And although I enjoyed shooting the 44 Magnum, uh, there was still something. There was still something very, very uh, special about the 44 Special. And you know, so that's where it brings me now. Um, I, now I've, I no longer have I no longer have a rifle in that cartridge, but I've got the you know I've got the, the Super Blackhawk. And not surprisingly, uh, my favorite load with this is the 44 Special. Now. A very good friend of mine, uh, who was in the gun business for many, many years, uh, for for four decades, um, he told me he's he told me on a number of occasions that the gun that tends to come back to his shop more frequently, he he never lacks for used uh, 44 magnums. Uh, they just they're always on the shelf. Uh, they may not last long, you know. You can, you you got to catch them when they're there. But he says they're always coming back. Uh, everybody wants to own the mystique of the 44 Magnum, and it's always the first gun that they unload when they need to have a little bit of extra cash, maybe to trade in for a different gun or something. It's the first one that they that they unload. Um, I think that if they, I think that if they had discovered the 44 Special and maybe even uh, some of the 44 Russian loads that are now being reintroduced for it, you know, that's a funny thing. The 44 Russian went out of business back at the turn of the century with smokeless powder is back on the scene now with uh, cowboy shooting and such is the case with the 44 Special also. But you know, if, if people only discovered that the 44 Magnum is really, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a great hunting cartridge, but it's not a very fun cartridge to shoot. There's, there's something to be said about the, the, tremendous recoil, the, the tremendous recoil, muzzle blast and all the other things. It's been my observation that the 44 Magnum is a flinch builder, you know, it's it's amazing how people will they'll go right from a, shooting a 22, and then they go back to the gun store and they buy a, they they buy a 44 Magnum, um, or they buy a 45 ACP. Uh, they they don't they they don't learn to uh, establish themselves uh, with any kind of shooting skill before they take on these big uh, blunderbusses. And it's a very unfortunate thing because a lot of a lot of potential shooting skill is, is immediately lost down the drain uh, when a person starts flinching. Once they start, when, once a person starts flinching, uh, it becomes a psychological demon that is very, very difficult to rid yourself of. So a 44 Magnum is not the cartridge to, to immediately uh, go out and buy. Uh, it, it was uh, John T. Amber, who was for many years the editor-in-chief of uh, Gun Digest uh, scribed that it was a uh, cartridge for, for veteran handgunners, and he's exactly right. It's, you know, you, you can't be a veteran handgunner simply because you wish to be. Uh, it, it takes, you know, you have, to, you have to build up, you have to build up confidence with handguns and get to be familiar with recoil, 
starting with cartridges like the 9mm, uh, with, you know, with heavy guns, and 38, and moving up gradually, even jumping up to the 357 immediately, uh, is, is, a, uh, is a thing that too many people do uh, to their own. Uh, it doesn't. Hurt. It doesn't help them. You know. I, I'm sorry to say. I. I don't want. I don't want people to feel discouraged. And I'm not against. You know. High power guns. Uh, but it really is one of the biggest banes on uh, gun learning to to, to basically become uh, firearm familiar to get into heavy caliber guns, whether they be shotguns, rifles, or head guns. You know. You just can't immediately. Uh, step out there and start blasting away with something that's uh, unfamiliar to your whole to your whole body. You know, it's it, it's your ears, your your sight, your 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 physical senses. Everything just collapses uh, around the uh, the tremendous recoil and and muzzle blast. So the 44 special is a tremendous uh, learning tool with the 44 Magnum. If there was ever one, if there was ever one really nice uh, companion uh, gun, that would be it. Because the, uh, the 44 Magnum is always built around a very heavy frame, usually a very heavy barrel, a heavy cylinder. The gun, the gun uh, is, is stoutly built like no other uh, handgun made. And when it's loaded with a cartridge, which is half of its uh, standard power, uh, it, becomes, it becomes a really peaceful uh, gun that's just plain fun to shoot. And I can tell you, I've got I've got more uh, very very accurate loads with the 44 Special than I have with perhaps any other uh, handgun I've ever fired. Um, it's it's a handgun which is capable, really capable, of three quarters of an inch accuracy at 25 yards from a from a sandbag rest with the correct loads and the correct bullets. So it's 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 always it. You know, it, it has the reputation that is deserved. It's it's uh, it, it's a very accurate target gun. Um, now, as far as uh, you know, what type of 44 Magnum a person uh, should buy, and let me just explain the 44. I'll, I'll bring out I'll bring out a couple of examples here. Um, here's the. Here's the 44 special right here. Uh, you know, this is this is the wad cutter load. In fact, that's that's the bullet style that's based on the Elmer Keith design. The Elmer Keith uh, designed a bullet which Lyman has been uh, making a bullet mold for for many many years, and it has that sharp shoulder, uh, which we call a semi wad cutter. But he basically transformed a semi wad cutter target load to a hunting bullet by using. Uh, Lyman number no. two uh, lead, which is an alloy uh, that that gives a great uh, hardness and resists leading. And this is a uh, this is a uh, Hornady flat point, soft point, which is loaded in the 44 special. And this particular round right here uh, would make a tremendous uh, medium game round out to uh, logical distances of 15, 20, 30 yards. And this this is this is boosted up to about 950 feet per second or so, and it's a it's a very uh, it's a very um, easy round to shoot, um, and it's still subsonic. Now here's the here's the 44 Magnum, and you can see there's quite a difference there's quite a difference in length um, between one and the other. It's the case length more than anything else. The the actual overall length in some cases uh, is is no. Uh, is no different. Let me see if I can get the this high without having it. There you go. Um, the whether somebody should get a, a single action or a double action really that's that's irrelevant. They're both the same cartridge. Um, the um, the single action the single action revolvers are every bit as accurate as the uh, double action revolvers. Uh, they're they're extremely uh, they're extremely uh, nicely made. They, they usually most of the companies put their best efforts into this uh, gun. Ruger especially when they call it the super the super Blackhawk, uh, they everything everything about the gun uh, was different immediately. The the lower grip frame 
went from being an alloy, went from being an aluminum uh, grip frame to uh, being a, a solid steel grip frame. So, and they they uh, increased the uh, hammer. The hammer was uh, increased to a wide spur, uh, not because it needed it, but just it, it's it's their deluxe model. So everything was kind of upgraded. Um, Smith and Wesson, likewise, uh, the Model 29 when it was out was a uh, fabulously made gun. They put they put all their best stuff in it. It was uh, when you bought a when you bought a Model 29, it was like it was like buying a Lincoln Continental. You just were getting everything. Um, you know, you got the best sights, you got the best uh, grips, you got everything. So they're all good. Um, rifle cartridges. Uh, you know, the the nice thing with the 44 uh, gun is that it, it's one of those guns that has a companion uh, with the rifles. And if there's, if there's ever a, if there's ever a, a slick, uh, I'm talking about a looker, as far as I'm concerned, that Model 1894 is a looker. That's a, that's a beautiful gun. Uh, it's, got that, it's got that same uh, slab side uh, ejection port that, uh, that the uh, 39A Marlin 22 has. And it's just, it's just a fabulous gun to handle. Um, recoil is recoil is almost non-existent with a 44 special, and it's very manageable with the 44 Magnum. Uh, accuracy is generally very, very good. But the 44 Magnum is a great cartridge. I highly recommend it to anybody who uh, wants to have an all-purpose gun. You know, it's for the for the uh, person who is not a hand loader, it's the ideal situation because most most people who um, purchase Firearms. If you buy a if you buy a 243 or a 308, uh, or if you buy a 45 ACP, you're basically stuck with whatever the factory loads are, or you have to buy uh, premium ammo, which you know is throttled down. They give you less they give you less powder and less bullet weight, but they charge you more because it's their it's their reduced reduced velocity special duty stuff. Um, but the uh, 44 Magnum. Uh, the 44 Magnum owner is in the same situation as the 357 Magnum owner. Uh, he can use he can use the, the more uh, the more polite 38 special loads or the more polite 44 special loads, and he can have a lot a lot of fun with it, a lot of target shooting, a lot of plinking fun, and things like that. And it doesn't go through raw materials like this like it's going out of style. It's a great cartridge. And when it's, when it's paired with a uh, rifle, and you've got the when you've got the both, uh, that's a that's a tremendous team. Uh, you know, it's it's just fun. It's a fun companion. The rifle adds uh, considerable velocity to you know its uh, potential simply because of additional burning time down the barrel. Now I'll say this about it: some people think that because it's a rifle, it, it's a stronger action, therefore they can boost the pressures higher. That is not the thing to do with the 44 Magnum. The 44 Magnum is already operating at uh, safe pressure limits limits for uh, most rifles, and any attempts to boost it higher than that, you really uh, you're not on safe territory. Remember, it's not just the, the brass itself is is an integral part of the uh, pressure situation. Uh, the brass is designed for the pressures that are, are contained within it at, at the velocities that the manufacturer originally specified. These cartridge cases can uh, these cartridge cases can easily uh, be defied, and they can they can easily be uh, compromised and split. And when you split pressures, when you when you're getting up beyond factory pressures in a in a 44 Magnum. Uh, you can certainly have a problem, and you can do some damage to a gun or, or hurt yourself. So it's not it's not recommended uh, that there were some older loading manuals that suggested that you could increase the uh, velocity of the 44 Magnum uh, rifle by by loading it with greater uh, powder charges. But that's most most companies now have realized that that was not sage advice; that it was something that uh, was not uh, well advised. So anyway, uh, it, it's a great cartridge as it is. It shouldn't be compared to anything. Uh, the 44 Magnum is just, a, you know, it's not a, it, it's not to be compared to a 3030. A 3030 has got greater ballistics. It's got greater, it's got greater downrange energy and everything. 
the 44 Magnum is just what it is. It's a 44 Magnum, and it's just a it's a terrific it's a terrific cartridge. It was a terrific cartridge when I was 14 years old when I was first learning to shoot a uh, you know center fire rifle. It was very manageable. Um, I would recommend I would recommend the same gun to a youngster uh, for deer hunting in the woods. It's not a long range cartridge. Anybody who tries to to, to shoot beyond 50 yards with a 40 44 Magnum is really starting to stretch its trajectory a little bit. Um, it can it can shoot out to 100 yards, but you know it, shooting a deer at 100 yards with it is an iffy proposition because the groups start getting a little bit uh, broad at that range. Um, and you know typical typical accuracy is not is not up in the category that I would say that would uh, endear to to 100 yards shooting. So I hope that. Uh, you learn something about the 44 Magnum and the 44 Special, and if you have one, don't be selling it right away. Try some, get some of those 44 Special uh, cartridges, throw it in, and go out and have some real fun. Take care, and God bless.